Hello, this is Faith at Faith and Books. I'm sitting in my garage on a Sunday morning. Uh, I'm going to make a quick update. The lighting is not so good. It's pretty cloudy out and it's a little chillier than I thought it would be. So I just put a sweater on, but I think I need, really need a jacket. But anyway, uh, my update is that I finished Phineas Finn and I also finished The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So Phineas Finn I listened to on LibriVox. And while I was driving around during the day, I have a lot of carpooling and stuff to do. Not really carpooling, it's just me driving. But I drive back and forth a lot to different places. And um, and so I listened mostly then and sometimes when I was just up in my room alone. But um, it because I don't have earphones. I've never gotten comfortable with earphones, but maybe I need to try again. I think they've made them better. I haven't tried in like, I don't know, 30-some years. But anyway... Phineas Finn was really absorbing. Uh, I was really taken with it. Even though Phineas at times, the main character, irritated me. Sometimes he's a little maddening. He's a young, kind of callow guy with high ideals and a lot of charm. He's handsome. He's well-spoken. All the, all the good things. He has many good things. But he is a little bit flighty when it comes to women and sort of deciphering what he really feels about a woman and what's ambition because this is Victorian England I think in the 1850s and he's he just by luck gets into parliament and he's very young at the age of 25 and so it's the book basically takes you through the next five years about five years and what happens to him and a lot of it has to do with potential um, you know, spouses, uh, searching for a potential spouse, and he doesn't have money. And so, and he's, he's been thrust into this upper crust society, uh, with lots of lords and ladies that do have money. And, uh, so it's, it's his temptations, but it also is a lot about politics. And it's very funny about how politics works in a legislative body. And all the the silliness and the absurdity and the the foibles and the personalities of the uh, men trying to do the the legislate the legislating. So I found it very very interesting, and I'm I just enjoy Anthony Trollope. I've been reading. I, I figured out that in the last three years. I have read either eight or nine of his novels, so I've really been trying to uh, get immersed in his work. He writes long novels, you know, these long Victorian novels. They, they aren't quick reads, at least for me they're not. Uh, this went faster, though, because it was on audio. It, that definitely speeds up your ability to read a more, more quantity of books, a greater quantity of books. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm happy about the... Uh, finding a, a niche in my life for audiobooks. I think my problem before was that I would listen to them on long drives and they would make me really sleepy. But right now I'm just getting in the car and driving for 15 or 20 minutes and then driving back. You know, so it's it's not long enough to make me sleepy. It's just long enough for me to like get a chapter in. So so I, I'm, I'm very pleased, and I really liked Phineas Finn. And the next book, which I, am, I haven't even put on TBR yet, but it's going to happen in 2022 at some point, is the Eustace Diamonds. And then the next one after that is called Phineas Redux. So I guess we revisit the, the character of Phineas Finn. And they're all kind of loosely tied. Like the first book in the Palliser series, which is what Phineas Finn is the second book in, um, they're just really loosely tied. They're all sort of revolve around Parliament, and there's a character named Plantagenet Palliser, and his his um, wife was kind of featured in the first book, Can You Forgive Her? And then in this book, he's just sort of in the background, but he's there, and there's a little bit of storyline about his family but not much it's really but it, so it's a very loose they call it the palliser series because i guess that's the thread that binds them all together i'm guessing but but it's not really about the palisers it's not like this six you know novel series on the palliser family exclusively so 
Anyway, so that was good. Then the second book I finished reading this week was The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. And this is for my humorous book club of the month. And everybody else, I think, has read it, like, in the early part of December. Um, I had so much trouble getting into it. I, at first, I just wasn't in the mood. It just turned me off. I wasn't interested. And it, it is a reread for me. And then I started to, like, I think last Sunday, I said, okay, I hope to get it read in a couple days. Well, famous last words, of course. Because every time I would start to read it, like, I would get a phone call or something would happen. Then for a couple of days, I mislaid it, so I couldn't even find it to read it. And then I would try to read it, and I would just fall asleep at night. I would just, and so the book is very zany. So if you miss a couple of sentences because you're nodding off a little bit, you have no idea what's going on. The action just switches really fast from scene to scene. Um, but once I did get into it, I did appreciate its comic genius. It's a very funny book. It's making fun of everything. And it's, uh, it's just silly. It's just a silly, um, <laughs> absurd and, and tongue-in-cheek kind of humor. Um, yeah, so it's very enjoyable. And there's so many quotable lines in there. In fact, I was talking to my husband because I said, aren't you excited that I'm reading The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Because when we first were dating... It was his favorite book at the time, and he read it out loud to me. And then I read him The Little Prince. That was my favorite book. Um, but um, And then I read it again with my teens. So, and he can quote, like, passages from it. Like, he used to be able to. But he was like, you know what? I, I just don't have any desire to pick it up or, or even, you know. Just, you know, he's done with it. Like, it, it, it served its purpose for a long period in his life, and then he's just done with it now. And that's kind of the way I feel. Like, maybe it doesn't bear too many rereadings, or maybe I just wasn't in the mood. But but on the other hand, it does have some very funny lines, and a lot of them I had remembered because my husband quotes them. Um, and so, yeah. Now, the book is funny in that it just stops. It just stops. There's no... <laughs> And and that's what happened. I think he ran into a deadline. He just sent him what he had written. And so the next books in the series really continue the story. Um, like, truly continue the story. Like, the next chapter is in the next book. So, um, but I don't really have any desire to read the rest of them. Um, I'm just not, I don't know. It's just not where I'm at. But I don't want to leave the impression that it isn't a work of comic genius. It is. So... Yeah, so that was The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and I'm still reading, it's going to be a few weeks, I think, I'm still reading on my Kindle, the biography of uh, Audubon, extremely interesting, really, really enjoying that one, and now I'm so excited because it's the week before Christmas, and I'm going to have this cozy, uh, young, I don't know if it's young adult or middle school story, The Gilded Girl. And I mentioned last week that I know the author, sort of. She's my co-admin for our buy, our local Buy Nothing group. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited to start this. This just seems nice and cozy and good for the week before Christmas. I think that was the other thing with The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It doesn't feel very Christmassy. Not that I have a high need to feel Christmassy. But um, it was like I read The Christmas Hirelings and that was too Christmassy. <laughs> it was like sentimental Saccharine Christmassy and then the Hitchhiker's Guide is just so flippant um it's not Christmassy at all um and then maybe this will be just right maybe this will be the happy medium so all right well that's it for me for my update um it's gonna be really busy this week and I don't know when I'll next make a video. It's probably going to be after Christmas. So I wish you a Merry Christmas if you celebrate or happy holidays, whatever you do. Uh, I wish you the best and um, happy reading. Bye.